there, Councillor. OK. Yeah. Yeah, you're live. OK, like, OK. Yeah. So should we start now or should we wait yeah. to one? Yeah, or just one minute we should give the, you know, these other people to join in or? We just no, start? just can't. We've got the officers are joining now. We've, we've yeah. got mm. most people here. OK. Carry on. OK, thank you very thank much you. everyone joining in this, uh, you know, the um, uh, Newtown World Forum meetings today. Um, I welcome everybody um, and I hope you'll be relaxing <laughs> during the you know running of the meeting. Um, I better to tell about the notice of recording um, that the residents and uh, listening and participating in in the online uh, meeting that a recording of the meeting will be available for future record. Um, have you got any? Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a, you know our um, uh, agenda, but you know the any um, any apologies. I have apologies for Reverend Alison Cousin, and another for Mr. Mustak M U S T A Q Ahmed, I think, or something. So if he joins in, please forgive me because I, I thought probably he'd not be joining in. So these are two actually, um, you know the. Uh, um, apologies so far I got it. Should you I start? received no other apologies councillor. Okay that will be fine then. So uh, number three of the agenda now COVID-19 so we hope to get some information from Marion Gibbons uh, Deputy Public Health Officer she will give an uh, update now. Thank you very much and if you can say something. Certainly. <clears throat> so um, in terms of you'll be very pleased to know that our case rate is coming down. It's now 123 cases per 100,000 compared to what it was at 176,000 um, per 100,000. So, yeah, and it's also decreased um, when we compare it against it, the England average. And we're now 36, Birmingham is now 36th highest in, in England. Um, spread is continuing to be mainly through households and social interactions and we've been having in the last week between 24 and 56 new cases a day at the hospital. So in terms of what we've seen a 30% change in the cases and going down by 30% over the last week so it, things are really truly beginning to improve which you'll be pleased to know. Um, in terms of where Newtown Ward is, it's 60th out of 69 wards. So where first is the highest and 69th is the lowest. So and we've, uh, there's only been nine reported cases in the last week. So a much better situation than it has been. And um, in terms of the case rate for Newtown, it's 0.62 um, cases per 100,000 and compared to 1.21 um per thousand for the population of Birmingham so a very much better situation um in terms of our we have now got four COVID champions in Newtown Ward which is a really excellent um thing to see um and those COVID champions will get the new newest information available at all times so if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with COVID become a COVID champion it's a really good way to find out what's going on um, in terms of the age groups where we're seeing most of the cases it's in the 20 to 20 20 to 39 year age group and you'll be pleased to know that there's only two percent in the 80 and over now in terms of the ethnic groups where we're seeing the greatest number it's in the Asian ethnic group at 26 percent and 25 percent amongst the black ethnic community and it's only 16 um, percent amongst the white community. Um, so in terms of what's going on with um, test and with test and trace at the moment, there's quite um, a lot of changes of late. Um, there are now um, mobile testing unit um, units across Birmingham where people can get their um, vaccinate um, their um, PCR or lateral flow tests undertaken. Um, and we've got the 
situation with vaccinations is going really, really well. Um, you'll be um, the NHS is doing an extremely good job with in that regard. Um, and we've been seeing the rate of positivity is being coming down as well. Um, um, so it's, it's it's definitely the rate of positivity rate is falling since lockdown. So all very positive news for us. OK, so. Are there any other things that um, that people would like to know? And I'll endeavour to answer questions. And if I'm not able to, I will take the um, questions away and ask colleagues um, and come back to you with the answers. Uh, can I ask you on behalf of the constituent um, only one question? Uh, you know the death rate uh, within the new town. Um, I, you know, Baringa City, uh, all over the city, there, there are 59 wars. Is there any uh, any statistics available only for new town? Not now. In the future, is there any chance to get it in the future? Yeah, you certainly. Know? That I most definitely can um, find out the, the the rate for for new town in particular. I've only got it at a city level. At the moment, yeah, that's fine. So, if if you have any any other questions from any of the residents or the participants, and um, I because I can't see you know, from your part, will be able to help in. Councillor, there are no questions in the Q and A box at the moment. Yeah. Um, for Marion, for well, Marion, yeah. if I could ask, uh, if you could just put in the chat box how people can get in touch regarding COVID champions or community champions. Yeah, certainly. I'll do that in just a second. So that in the Q, live Q and A chat box. That's that right. Night. Yeah. Uh, I can't open the Q and A chat box. Okay, we'll we'll post it in a while. Then. Thank you. Council, I think if that's all yes. from Marion. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Marion, for your you know presentation. It is very useful for the decision of Newtown. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. That, now, that's fine. Yeah. Um, thank you, Councillor Islam. It's been very pleasant to, to 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 meet with you, and I will send through the the um information for you regarding how to, to get in touch with the COVID champions. Thank you very much. It's very kind. Thank you. Should we move to the uh, next one, a clean yard zone? Uh, so I think Gemma Kahlo will be able to you know, start your presentation. If anybody has any question, so they will, uh, I mean, you know, they will put to the test. Box. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having yes. me. Um, I do have a short presentation that I was just going to run through, if that's OK. Um, and then if there's any questions, I'll answer those at the end. So um, if you can just bear with me two seconds. Um, OK. Hopefully that's showing on your screen now. Yeah, yeah, yep. we can see. Fabulous, thank you. Um, so my name is Gemma Callow. I am the communications manager leading on stakeholder engagement for the clean air zone. Um, the clean air zone, I'm sure people are aware, but is being introduced to tackle poor air quality. Air pollution has been declared a national health emergency and in Birmingham alone, it contributes to 900 deaths every year through conditions such as heart disease, cancer, lung disease, etc. I won't go through all the figures on screen. Um, one of the most affected groups are children. They are closer to the ground and closer to those exhaust fumes, so they inhale three times as much air pollution than we do as adults, which has a serious detrimental impact on their health and development. So um, Birmingham is introducing a clean air zone. The, the graph on screen here, the, the infographic, shows that um, research undertaken in Birmingham city centre showed that 50% of journeys into the centre were undertaken by car. Uh, this is pre-COVID. And um, of those car journeys, 250,000 of them every day were for less than one mile. So that's a 20 minute walk. So what the clean air zone is trying to do is deter those high polluting vehicles from entering the area, but also encouraging people who could walk or cycle or take public transport 
to consider alternative means to again try to help tackle those air pollution issues. Birmingham's clean air zone will go live on the 1st of June this year. That is fixed and we will be introducing a category D clean air zone. So it's important to stress, first of all, that a clean air zone is not the same as a congestion charge. A congestion charge like in London will charge every vehicle to drive through a certain area. The clean air zone will only charge the most high polluting vehicles, which we estimate to be about one in four vehicles. Because we're introducing a category D zone, that does include private, private cars and taxis. So the Birmingham clean air zone you can see on the screen is everywhere within the blue shading. So it's everywhere within the A4540 middleway, but not the middleway itself. So if you have a compliant vehicle, you do not need to take any action. If you are in a non-compliant vehicle and you drive into that blue area, you will be subject to a charge of £8 a day if you're in a car, a taxi or a van or £50 a day if you're in an HGV coach or a bus. It's important to stress that a day is midnight to midnight, not 24 hours from when you enter that zone. But during that midnight to midnight period, you can enter and leave as many times as you want for a single charge. Um, there'll be AMPR cameras positioned in the zone that will pick you up as you enter. And then you must pay either six days before you go in, the day you go in, or six days after. So it's a 13 day payment window and you can do that online using the government's um, payment system, which is online or over the phone. If you don't pay within those 13 days, you'll be subject to a fixed penalty notice of £120. It's important to stress that we do have over 300 signs going up on the boundary and approach to the zone warning you that you're entering, but you won't receive any notifications such as a text or letter to say that you've entered and a charge is due. So the onus is on you as a driver to know that you've entered and as on you as a driver to make the payment. So the obvious question is, will I be charged? The best thing to do is to go onto the Brumbreeds website where you can enter your vehicle into the government vehicle registration checker and it will tell you whether or not you're subject to that charge. However, it's based on emission standard. So if your vehicle is a Euro 4 petrol or better, which is most vehicles manufactured from 2006 onwards, a Euro 6 diesel or better, which is most vehicles manufactured from September 2015 onwards, a gas Euro 6, fully electric, fully hydrogen fuel cell or a hybrid electric, you will not be charged. You can get that information from your V5C logbook, but the easiest thing to do is to go on that Brumbreeze website and input your registration details. Um, it's important to stress that the clean air zone is not intended to be a money making scheme, it is not intended to support the council's budget and fund day to day council services. For us, if we make no money from this, then that's great because we've achieved our objective of deterring high polluting vehicles from driving through the zone and therefore air quality will be drastically improved. However, we do know that some money will be generated. So we've identified already that some of that money will be used to implement controlled parking zones um, on the border around the um, clean air zone to stop people parking on the outside and walking in, causing problems for residents. We are funding a hydrogen bus pilot scheme and we'll be in, uh, implementing pedestrianisation and active travel improvements to make walking and cycling safer and more appealing. We do have some exemptions. We do recognise that some people will be impacted more than others. Um, so what we have implemented and what people can apply for and can apply for right now is a temporary exemption permit, which means that if you have a non-compliant vehicle, you can drive that vehicle without having to pay the charge for the specified amount of time. So if you're a resident and live within the zone and own a non-compliant vehicle, you can apply for a temporary two year exemption. So you can drive that vehicle for two years from the date the zone goes live and you won't be charged. If you work within the clean air zone, but live outside of it and earn less than 30,000 pounds a year and work at least 18 hours a week, you can also apply for a temporary one year exemption. 
We also have a one year exemption for commercial vehicles that are registered within the clean air zone and to people visiting one of three out of hours medical provisions, which are the Children's Hospital, Badger Medical and Atwood Green, where you will be able to collect a voucher to avoid any charges. It's important to stress with the exception of the hospital one, you must apply for those exemptions. You can't get them automatically. Um, other exemptions um, that are available, I'll just whiz through, through these. Motorcycles will not be charged and nor will show vehicles such as fairground vehicles. Historic vehicles which are over 40 years old, specialist vehicles like emergency services, and community and school transport such as ring and ride. Um, it's important to note that if you have a blue badge, you are not automatically exempt. You need to have a disabled or disabled passenger tax class, which is tax class 85. That will be stated in your V5C logbook and you need to be in receipt of certain benefits to have that classification. So you can check that with the DVLA to see if you're eligible, but a blue badge does not make you automatically exempt. Uh, just to whiz through these, um, so we do have some funding available to support our taxi drivers. So if you're licensed with Birmingham City Council as a hackney carriage or a private hire driver, you can receive grant funding to upgrade or replace um, your vehicle so that it is compliant. Um, businesses can apply for some funding and also those people we talked about earlier who work in the zone and live outside of it can apply for funding if they scrap their non-compliant vehicle and they can receive £2,000 towards a compliant vehicle or £2,000 in mobility credit such as a Swift card to use on public transport. We will be launching that scrappage scheme shortly. It's not open to applications just yet. Um, so I'll whiz through the last few. Um, the clean air zone does tie into a uh, bigger vision for the city, including the, the transport plan where we're looking to reallocate road space to prioritise active and sustainable travel and public transport over private cars. And to talk about some of those issues earlier that I mentioned about parking um, and residence parking areas. Um, we also as a council are committed to being net zero carbon by 2030 and this will help us um, on the way to achieving that. Um, we are also installing, installing excuse me, um, 300 electric vehicle charging points over the next few years to help make um, EV uh, electric vehicles more appealing and easier to charge and we'll be installing the first of those later this month. So that's um, a very quick overview of the zone and how it will operate. The website is on screen at the moment, so that's brumbreeze.co.uk, where you can apply for an exemption and check your vehicle. I would urge you to do that straight away. And if you have any questions, please contact myself or the team at cleanair.birmingham.gov.uk. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Thank you, Thank, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Uh, it is very useful for the uh, resident of Newtown. Um, can I, before anybody else, can I ask a question? Um, I, I think you did mention about it, just to make it clear. The yeah. car, those who are not actually fit into the linear road, linear road, those who are living within the linear road area. And as you mentioned, I think you mentioned that they can make an application to replace the car. And if this is the case, how much they will get, for example, you said mentioned about 2,000 and 3,000. So I'm a little bit confused about it. So can you repeat again, if you don't mind? Yeah, Yeah, of course. Um, so taxi drivers who are licensed with the City Council, so Hackney Carriage um, or Private Hire, they can apply for various grants which are up to £5,000. For the Worker Scrappage Scheme, so that's for people who live outside of the zone but work within it, they can apply, they can scrap their non-compliant vehicle and they'll get £2,000 towards a compliant vehicle or £2,000 towards a mobility credit such as a SWIFT card. Okay, another question relating to this. For example, the car which is not suitable, what will be, because will the City Council take this car away because of the, maybe one of the constituent, those who are living with the Newton, for example, clean their zone area, and if, if they want to replace the car, so, you know, the old car, what will be happen to this car? Or is it free for the, um, you know, the resident to sell this car to outside and then they claim another uh, 2,000 or 3,000 pounds to replace the car? So how does it work really? I'm not clear as well yet, you see. Uh, 
No problem. Um, so for residents who live yeah. in the zone, there is no financial support um, yeah. because they get the extra year exemption. So they get two years. Um, for the workers who are eligible for the scrappage scheme, um, we'll publish all these details because we're still sorting them out at the moment with the terms and conditions. Um, so what would happen is you would take that vehicle to a an approved scrappage firm and they would scrap it and then we would provide you with um, funding credit towards a compliant vehicle or towards that SWIFT card. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. But is there any written questions? Sorry, Councillor, there are no questions in the chat box. Sorry, Gemma, there are no questions in the chat box currently. Okay. If there are any that come in afterwards, I'm more than happy. Um, if you want to send them to Clean Air Zone team, we will we will look into those and I can share a copy of the presentation if that helps. That will be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you for your time. It is very useful for us. You know, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you. Now we move to the waste management update. Les, is it Les William will be William will be in present or? I I think Les is having trouble joining us, Councillor. I've just emailed him. Yeah. Um, if you could just bear with me a moment. I'll... Yeah. In the meantime, Councillor, would you like to give an update on on update yeah. for councillors and in, in terms of Newtown? Yeah. 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 It is one of the things that I have to update about the funding will be available for all 69 was including Newtown, which is actually resident and community groups have the chance to apply for money from uh, which is two million pounds for the whole city. So our Newtown ward will be getting about seven, the maximum seventeen and a half thousand. So it will be in both called get active and ready study and farm, study and farm. There are three things to do and also celebrating culture. This money will be, I think, uh, you know, coming from the uh, clean, sorry, not, sorry, from the uh, um, Commonwealth Games money or something. So it is get active. So there are there is some kind of description. I already asked some of the community centers in Newtown, including Buddha Center and other people, and I told them, and I forwarded this email, which I received from the Barrington City Council and ask them to get ready and if they wish to, they can make an application you know, if they can fulfill the requirement um, by the City Council. So this is the one of the you new. Know. So I don't think I have anything else. Uh, the it probably, probably um, I can say something to us the, um, uh, about the West Bengal side. Um, one of the information he will come from, I'll give. So that's all right. That's fine, Councillor. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, the uh, this is the only information I got now. So, you know, the but another information I'll be giving, not now, um, if we have this officer coming in about the, you know, the uh, waste management, then probably I can add in the other, other bit. Is it all right? Hi, hi Pat. I've tried. Um, Les is having problems getting on. Um, I'm just going to give him a call, OK? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Apologies for those that are watching this live. Um, one of our colleagues are having difficulty coming on to the um, live stream, so would you kindly bear with us? Thank you. I'm afraid I don't think Les is going to make it tonight. Um, I think we're going to have to send his apologies. OK, Councillor, there are, unfortunately, Les, as Leslie's just said, is unable to join us. Um, we've covered all four yeah. items that are on the agenda, unless there are other um, updates you wish to give the residents yeah. of Newtown. Uh, yeah, update is um, it, it, it is actually general one because we, we had a meeting on the second of February, I believe, and we discussed about the West, I mean, you know, flight tipping uh, all over the city. And I think the cabinet will make a very firm decision shortly to actually how to how we can get rid of the flight tipping. 
So there will be some money available as well. Uh, I'm not saying that for the each war, but uh, sorry, all the wars will be getting some kind of money. I mean, you know, not I mean, you know, separately, but it's a great effort from the Birmingham City Council to tackle this fly tipping because it has been taken seriously by all the councillors and the officers of the Birmingham City, including our leader of the Birmingham City Council. So that could be one of the good news to tackle the fly tipping. So um, another thing uh, that the one thing I have to say, uh, you know, I have to inform the new town resident uh, because I know that lots of fly tipping happened within new town and the people reported to me and I requested them to give the names. Even they have seen the, you know, the cult, name of the culprit. Anyway, they, they have seen the culprit and I asked them to give me the, you know, some kind of information so that I can pass on to the officer, but they are reluctant, they are a bit frightened. Most of the okay, only one occasion, one person was brave and he gave me uh, the details and this person was prosecuted and fined. So I urge everyone from the Newtown community, sorry, Newtown, that everyone should be vigilant and just report to me if they're, if they're or to the city council, uh, the relevant section of the city council, and the action will be taken place. There'll be no harm. So this is my request to every single Newtown. Thank you. Um, Okay, Councillor Rifter, on that note, I'm, I'm afraid we'll, the, we've come to the end of our um, meeting just in terms before, of agenda. Just, yeah, just before I go, I should have, I can just tell the decision, we should have another meeting before cleaner zone will be starting 1st of June. So I, because I have been told by one or two people late this afternoon that if we have arranged another meeting because they could not participate. So probably one in middle of uh, May, about five, two weeks before the cleaner will start. So it is between us anyway, so we will decide. It's for the public. We will be arranging another meeting probably uh, any time, which is convenient time, probably middle of May. Thank you very much. Do I now close the meeting or? There are no questions in the question box, yes. Councillor. Yes. Can I just say to the residents, those that are uh, watching live and those who will watch on a report, if there are any questions, any concern, kindly get in touch with your local council, which is Council Islam, and um, we will look into your in issues and concerns. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And good night. And good night. Good night, Pat. And uh, Leslie.